interested in Hakima and what she has to share, or Tasha, some of these people working in design in their workplace and how they're determining space. I'm hoping that it's it's starting to focus on the work. And then I'm really going to reach to the people that are inside of companies and they're developing the experience. So they're trying to figure out what is this thing going to look like in seven, five, two years? And I, I know it's it's going to bust loose. So all of these kind of real estate things around my simplistic head are percolating, hence the topic today, uh, uh, designing for 2027. It's also the name of a table that at the mosh pit in Nashville, hey, Sergeant will be the subject matter expert. What are you all using now, Tasha and Hakima, to kind of determine what you want to do with space? If anything, you may not be making a move yet. You may still just be observing. The pandemic, our office was 100% traditional. Work from home was a no-no. They call it work where it works environment. So we don't care where you work, but <laughs> you need to get your work done. We have essential and non-essential workers because we are a manufacturing facility. So the people who need to be there to support the workers making the stuff are there and have been there pretty much every day since the beginning of the pandemic. Everybody else, you don't see them making space, reserva space reservation systems available, doing utilization studies, all of those things. We're just at the cusp of actually getting our senior leadership teams buy in to actually focus on a workplace strategy because they're starting to see these things and they're like we got to get a handle on this because we're about to spend millions and millions of dollars on upfitting space for nobody <laughs> in my own company where if you're supposed to right you're strongly encouraged we're going to be returning to the office right and then nobody comes in but I, I read a recent article too that no there's no punishment there's no punishment. If you don't come in, there's no punishment. So as they start to figure this out, then I don't know what's going to happen there. I'm just wondering if we were only at 30 to 50% pre-pandemic and COVID gives you yet another, you know, now we're even, let's say at 20 to 30% or 30 to 40%, like more people are doing activity-based work, more people are working remotely, more companies are buying into it. But it's going to, then we're all going to get, because we're human and we go back to behaviors we know, we're all going to end up falling into some pattern this year. And then it's going to take another event to push it over the edge. And, and remember this, they were, people were mandated to be in the office five days a week before the pandemic, right? Mandated three days a week, that's 60% presence. What they're seeing is 42% coming in. Mandated 60, they're coming in 42. Those that don't mandate, just say, figure it out for your teams. You guys do. We trust you. Without any mandate, they're coming in 41% of the time. A 1% difference, and you've got people you know much happier because they have autonomy versus mandated. I think we're moving toward the right direction. There is some work there internally among companies to do what works best for them, employee and leadership, and kind of like come to terms on that um, versus deciding what's best for the employee or what's best for leadership because we're, we're creating a divide and it becomes hard for us as designers to create a space that's inclusive for both leadership and employee. So um, I think the hope is, you know, moving toward more of that open work environment, but at the same time, something that can benefit both the company. Because I, I don't think people want everybody to work from home um, because we're, we're human beings. We like to interact and we learn from being around each other. But I think it's the middle ground is, is what everybody is looking for.